All right, I think you're going to like tonight's video on reflecting parabolas. Uh, there's two rules we got to learn today, and once we get them down pat, they're, they're, everything's going to be pretty straightforward, but it's going to take a little practice, as always, to get that down pat. We're going to build on what we did yesterday. Yesterday, we were shifting. In other words, we were sliding the parabolas left and right, up and down. Today, we're going to talk about, we're going to explore two things. We're going to explore reflecting parabolas across the x-axis, and then we're also going to reflect them across the y-axis. All right, so we're going to look at those types of reflections. And so a reflection's a lot like a flip. Um, in other words, just to give you a quick visual, if my first, uh, if the original parabola looked like this, and I wanted to reflect it across the x-axis, I'm just going to flip it over the x-axis. It would still have the same roots, and it would look something like that. Uh, but if I wanted to reflect the original blue one over the y-axis, uh, do this one in green, if I reflected blue over the y-axis, it would look like uh, this, something like that. So we're going to do those two types of reflections and work on the equations of the new graphs after we do it visually. All right, I'm going to have to use some of my nicest tiny handwriting here to try to squeeze these in. Uh, but the first one says, let's let G be the negation of f of x, okay? So in other words, I want you to think we are going to negate the entire function f of x, okay? Whenever that negative is on the outside of f, we are going to negate the entire function. So let's say that g of x equals negative, and then we're going to substitute the x squared minus the 6x plus 5 in for f. So f was equal to that quantity, so I just substitute that quantity in for f. And then from there, you'll like the next move. We're just going to distribute the negative sign. So it's negative x squared plus 6x minus 5. In other words, we just negated each and every individual term. And now we want to graph it. So I'm going to make a, you know, I'm just going to my calculator. I'm going to throw it in my calculator. And I'm going to get a table of values. And my vertex was at 3, 4. And so let's plot 3, 4. I'm going to go over 1, 2, 3, up 4. And that's going to put me right around there. And then I'm just graphing my other points here. I had like uh, 4, 3, and I had uh, 5, 0. And then on the other direction, I was here and I was here. So I got something like this. So what just happened here? Um, what just happened? Compared to the original graph, we just reflected f above or across the x-axis. So in order to answer b, they said, how is the graph of f transformed to produce the graph of g? So the blue guy was g here. Should have labeled that. Okay, we reflected f of x across the x-axis. All right, let's switch colors here. Now they want you to consider h of x, which is f of negative x. All right, so in this particular one, I want you to think substitute. We're going to substitute a negative x into each term. So if h of x is equal to f of negative x, what I'm going to do is every time I see an x, I'm going to substitute a negative x into his place. And that last term is strictly a plus 5. It doesn't have an x in it. And as I clean these up, if you take a negative x and square it, in other words, you multiply negative x by itself, you're going to get a positive x squared. And then if I multiply a negative 6 times a negative x, I get positive 6x plus 5. So this is my new equation for h of x. I'm going to throw it in my calculator. I'm going to graph it. Or I'm going to go to the table of values. I should say. My vertex this time was at negative 3 comma negative 4, just scrolling up and down the table until I see it start to turn around. Left 3, down 4 units. It's going to put me right here. And let's see, and then I got this point, and then I got this point, this one here, this one here. And hopefully your graph looks the same. Whoops, should have went right through there. All right, so how does this red one, and we'll name him H of X, how does he compare to the original one in black? And I would say that um, we reflected F of X across who? Across the Y axis. We reflected F of X across the Y axis. 
All right, so I want to summarize what we just kind of explored and discovered on that last example. And the two things, and this is the one big thing that you really want to put a box around in your notebook and make this pop right off the page tomorrow when you go to look at it, is if we do negative f of x, we just reflected f across the x-axis. However, if we do f of negative x, it's going to be a reflection in the y-axis. I actually got a pretty good way to memorize this. Now remember, so if we negate f of x, now remember f of x is the same thing as a y. So in that case, you're negating y, and if you negate y, you just did a reflection over the x-axis. Just the opposite of what you think. Negate y, reflect in the x. Just the contrary. On that second one, the negatives on the inside of the parentheses, in other words, you are negating the x, and whenever you negate the x, it's a reflection over the y-axis. Again, just the opposite of what you might expect. Okay, they've given us a linear function, g of x equals 5x minus 7, and they want me to do a reflection in both the x and the y-axis, and they want me to label the equations. Now, I'm not going to do anything graphical here. I'm just going to do everything algebraically in terms of the equation itself. So I'm going to kind of split my page in half here. And on the left side here, I'm going to focus strictly on reflecting it across the x-axis. And according to what I just said on the last slide, whenever I reflect something across the y-axis, I'm thinking I need to negate the y-value. In other words, we need to negate, in this case, g of x. So I'm going to say negative g of x is equal to negative quantity 5x minus 7. Just substitute the 5x minus 7 where the g of x used to be. And then we will distribute the negative, just like this. And that, ladies and gentlemen, is my new equation for a reflection in the x-axis. On the contrary, if we wanted to reflect g across the y-axis, this time I'm thinking I need to substitute a negative x in for x. Okay, so now we're thinking, I'm thinking substitute. And we're going to say g of negative x equals f times negative x minus 7. And therefore, g of negative x equals negative 5x minus 7. And again, they said uh, we could easily check these. We could real easily check these. We could graph this in y1. We could graph this in y2 and visually confirm that it reflects over the x-axis. And then we could graph this one in y3 and confirm that that's a reflection in the y-axis. All right, little multiple choice question to warm us up here. Uh, they've given us a parabola, and they want to know which of the following equations is a reflection in the x-axis. So um, instantly, I could just go back, check your notebook. What's our rule say? If we're going to reflect across the x-axis, we're going to negate f of x. We're going to negate the y, so to speak. So I'm going to go negative quantity, and then f of x is really 2x squared minus 3x plus 8. And therefore, negative f of x is really negative 2x squared, just distributing that negative now to each term. And hopefully we can go look at those multiple choices and find a winner, negative 2x squared plus 3x. And i got to watch the signs real carefully. I settled on number 2. Now, of course, one of the nice things about multiple choice questions is we can graph them. Graph this rascal in y sub 1, graph this rascal in y sub 2, and just visually confirm that the original graph is getting flipped across the x-axis. Another multiple choice question, and I'm going to do it algebraically, and we can certainly confirm or check our answers on our calculator. They want me to take this parabola right here and reflect it across or reflect it in the y-axis. And so I'm just going to go check my rule, and the y-axis says f of negative x. In other words, I'm thinking substitution, substitute a negative x in the place of every x that used to be in this equation. All right, now my order of operations says that I need to square the negative x first, which gives me positive x squared. And then I'll multiply the two negative, the negative 7 and the negative x to get plus 7x. And the last term never changes because it's a constant. And now I just match it up, and I like choice number 3. Again, graphing them simultaneously, y sub 1 here, y sub 2 here. Check and see if there are reflections across the y-axis. All right, I'm going to introduce you to what I think is easily the most challenging question of the night. But the good news is, is there's more than one answer. And so I certainly encourage you to maybe develop another answer and make your argument for it tomorrow in class. I'd be very interested to hear that. And I, and I think some of you are going to be real creative and come up with some really good answers. But they wanted to know, if I compared this function to the, the godfather parabola, so to speak, y equals x squared, 
what kind of transformations took place. Now, visually, I think, you know, y equals x squared looks like this. And then if I graphed g of x on my calculator, it would look, let's see, it went, the vertex went up four units and then it opened down, something like this. So the question is, what kind of transformations took place in order to get the black graph to the blue graph? Now the one thing that caught my attention was I was going to factor out a negative one. Okay, In other words, I was going to divide each of these terms by negative one, which gave me positive x squared minus four. And of course that one's really optional. I could just say negative quantity x squared minus four. And right now, if you just focused on this portion right here, if you only saw x squared minus 4, you would say the parabola got shifted down 4 units. So I'll make a little note to myself, down 4 units. And then, anytime we're negating the entire equation like that, it, we are, are doing a reflection across the x-axis. Okay, and I think you could confirm that here on this particular graph right here. If the first thing I did is took the black graph and moved it down four units, it would start to look like this. And then if I reflected that across the x-axis, I think it would land right on the blue graph. Although mine's you know spread out a little wider, it's a little, it's not exact, but um, of course if we did it on the calculator, I think it'd look real sharp, and we'd be able to confirm that. Okay, last one for tonight. I think this you'll find this one much more enjoyable than the last one. We're going to do it graphically, and they've given us this beautiful picture. And uh, the, on the first graph, they want us to do negative f of x. So the first thing I said, if we're negating f, we're really negating y, which is a reflection across the x-axis. And so I'm just going to take each point one at a time. So for instance, this point right here. If he's three units below, I'm going to reflect him, and he's going to land three units above. So I'm staying on a straight line, just going three units above. This next point here, he's two units above already, so I'm going to reflect him, and he's going to go two units down. And I'm just going to follow that same pattern. If, if this guy's four above, I'm going to go four down. If that vertex is five above, I'm going to go five down. And let's see, just keep going. Okay, one, two, three, four. Five. Oops, I think I miscounted the... He was 5, he was 6, and then this one's 5 again. So I'm going 5 down. I think i got to go a little further down. Fix that up, okay. And then he's 2 above, so I'm going 2 below. This one's 3 below, so I'm going 3 above. And I get a nice picture that looks like this. Hopefully you agree with that. But the key was right off the bat. What did I do first? I said to myself, that's a reflection in the x-axis. Once I made that decision, I thought it was pretty easy. Now for part B, we're negating x directly, which means it's a reflection across the y-axis. And all I'm going to do is I'm going to say, uh, for instance, um, let's start with the vertex. If this guy's two units to the left, he's now going to be two units to the right of the y-axis. So I'm going to put my uh, first dot right there, right here. Um, let's see, this guy's one unit left, so now it's one unit to the right. This guy here was three units to the left, now he's three units to the right. Uh, this guy's not going to move at all, he stays where he is. This one's uh, currently four units to the left, so I flip him over, and now he's four units to the right. And my parabola is just going to look like this. And it does look like a nice reflection over the y-axis. So really get those two rules memorized. Make sure, before we walk in tomorrow, that you feel good about determining if I said f of negative x, what kind of reflection is that? Or if I said negative f of x, make sure we know what kind of reflection that is. Okay. So of course, this one's in the y-axis. And this one down here is across the x-axis. And that's really what it boils down to, ladies and gentlemen. And if you feel comfortable with these two rules right here, then we are going to really do well tomorrow. All right, we'll see you.